welcome all the attendees, dear chairman and discussant. Uh, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is always substantial entity for research. Patient with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction may have a not uh, a benign course or natural history. They may suffer hospitalization or even mortality. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction has claimed its own dignity, being markedly different from heart failure with reduced ejection fraction in terms of etiology and also in terms of natural history and also management. To date, no convincing treatment strategies has been shown to reduce cardiac mortality or even morbidity in such patients. Up to now, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction treatment has been borrowed from the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction experience with poor results. Even the pharmacological or classic pharmacological strategies we know targeting neurohormonal mechanism as ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and others focused on blockage of neuro neurologic and renin angiotensin aldosterone system have been less effective in patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. So none of the large randomized controlled trials conducted in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction have achieved even their primary endpoint. So heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, basophysiology is complex and involves for sure diverse range of other unknown mechanism rather than classic neurohormonal mechanism as we know. So a growing body of evidence points the finger toward this novel mechanism as a major determinant of the cascade that justifies the obscure clinical manifestation of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So this hypothesis suppose that there is a new paradigm explains the basophysiology. They linked heart failure with preserved ejection fraction phenotype to its comorbidities. That mean obesity, metabolic syndrome, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, diabetes, physical inactivity, COPD, all sharing same pathway. What is this pathway? Systemic inflammation, rising of high sensitive CRP or interleukins or tumor necrotic factors. This systemic inflammation, suppose it causes a damage to the endothelium of coronary microvasculature as a primary injury. In turn, this primary injury spread around the perivascular tissues to affect in somehow the cardiomyocyte and the causing the secondary cardiomyocyte injury, what is called endothelial mesenchymal transition, expressed by reduction in nitric oxide, vasodilatation, so on, causing or increasing the stiffness of LV, increase in collagen deposition, and finally express or express remodeling and increasing in the uh, reduction of the diastolic function. This mechanism is not reversible or transient. It is self perpetrate, that mean it have a positive feedback, always occurred, always occurred, not stoppable. In a greater magnitude than observed among patients with reduced ejection fraction. This hypothesis triggered new think about novel therapeutic potentials targeting this coronary microvascular dysfunction for such patient. That mean we target or preventing the endothelial dysfunction with somehow targeting the nitrous oxide donors. We, we want to increase the nitrous oxide donors. So studies for nitrous oxide donors like uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, uh, others showed no benefit for such uh, prevention. Another mechanism targeting interleukin-1, a drug called anakinra, novel drug, 
prevent the progression of interleukin-1, also failed to uh, find any clinical benefit. And recently, a new drug called perfinidone, targeting or preventing the myofibroblast and, uh, and uh, prevent the extracellular matrix deposition. This drug used previously in the uh, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis management and showed somehow benefit. So this drug is supposed to be beneficial in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So this trial, the ROUT trial, which we conducted in Manchester University Foundation and published during the last ACC conference, it is a phase two trial. That means it targeting the safety and to, to explain how this drug is acting. It was a randomized small study, one center trial, enrolled about uh, 94 patients with mean age 78 years, female gender 47%, diabetic 34%, and enrolled heart, uh, patients with heart failure preserved ejection fraction more than 45, also have elevated n terminal brew B uh, nitritic peptide level more than 300, and uh, to explain the excess in extracellular matrix, they use cardiac MRI to assess this accumulation. And enrolled only patient with myocardial fibrosis, more than 27%. This patient randomized for berfinidone versus placebo as baseline, and after 12 uh, months, 52 weeks, uh, for another setting of cardiac MRI to, uh, as a primary endpoint to assist the change or the reduction in myocardial fibrosis. Using cardiac MRI enhanced lead gadolinium enhancement and somehow this formula to assist the ex uh, extracellular uh, volume they found in their primary endpoint. A, a significant reduction in the extracellular matrix between the two sets of cardiac MRI. So this study fit its primary outcome, which was positive. Also, the study found evidence that fluid retention measured using nitritic peptides improved in patients who took berfinidone compared with those receiving placebo. But the secondary outcome was negative. No change as regard the systolic function by echo, no change of uh, a six minute walking test. As regards safety, 12 patients had side effects in the berfinidone group, but most common adverse events were, were benign in form of nausea, insomnia, and rash. They conclude from this study among patients with heart failure with preserved digestion fraction and the myocardial fibrosis, administration of berfinidone for 12 weeks, 12 months, reduce myocardial fibrosis. The association of reduction in nitritic peptide provides support for heart scaring, having a casual role in heart failure and being an effective therapeutic target. The favorable effect of berfinidone in patients with heart failure or preserved genetic fraction will need to be confirmed in future phase three trial. The ongoing research for improving therapy in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction should not neglect the trial attempt to enhance the Zorovel paradigm, which puts the chronic microvasculature and inflammation as a new strategy for management. Thank you.